Mm -mm -mm. Who made this? Who made this? Hi, I'm Lashida Perry, and today I'm going to show you how to decorate a cake using the Terrazzo Swiss Buttercream Method. By the way, you can use whatever cake you want, but I'll be using a matcha chiffon cake, and I'm going to fill it with a raspberry ganache and a mango buttercream. And before I start slicing the cake, I'm going to go ahead and make my mango buttercream. And that's super easy because I have a Swiss buttercream here and some mango curd. That's how I like to make my mango buttercream. So I'm going to take some Swiss buttercream here and there are several different types of buttercreams you can use. You have Swiss, you have Italian, you have American, but by far Swiss is my favorite. It's nice and light, it's not as sweet, the texture is smooth, and when it comes to flavoring it, oh my God, the possibilities out there, you have so many. <laughs> so now here I have some mango curd. And this part you can do to your liking if you really, really want that mango flavor to be smack in your face, you can add a little bit more, but my ratio is normally about four parts buttercream to one part curd. Go ahead and mix that very well. And you'll see it's going to take on a different color thanks to that mango curd. But this is a great way to naturally flavor your buttercream, also naturally color it. So I'm all for adding curds to my buttercream. Look at that. See the difference? That makes me happy. Okay, on to the next step now. We need to slice our chiffon cake. They can be a little harder to slice due to the natural texture of the cake. You always want to work with chilled cake. I like to use a bread knife, AKA serrated knife, no matter what type of cake I am slicing. So I'm just going to gently remove this top layer here just trimming it, just leveling it off a little bit. So now that I have the top leveled off, I'm going to slice the cake in half. So I do that by keeping my knife parallel to the cake stand. I find the halfway mark. I'm not really moving the knife too much. I'm allowing my hand to turn the cake turntable. And after I go all the way around, I gently move my knife towards the center. So nice. Turn, and chin that knife towards the center. And after the third or fourth time, that knife will come right out. As you can see, this cake is releasing a lot of crumbs, um, but that's the nature of a chiffon cake. So don't worry. All right, one down, two more to go. And I like to keep the slices together. Um, and I'll explain that when I'm assembling the cake. My chiffon layers are ready to go. Let's go ahead and assemble this cake. I like to put down a little piece of damp paper towel. That's going to prevent the board from sliding. I also have a little piece of cardboard here. Go ahead and place down just a little bit of edible glue. In this case, some mango buttercream making sure that everything is centered. My board is centered on the cake stand, and then my cardboard is centered on the other board. That's going to be very important, especially when it's time for us to smooth ice our cake. In addition to the mango buttercream is some raspberry ganache. I love matcha and raspberry together, and then that little bit of mango as well. I think that's the perfect combination. So matcha, raspberry, and mango, that's the perfect combination. So first I'm going to take a layer of cake and place it onto my board. Soak it with a little bit of vanilla bean simple syrup. This is just to add an additional layer of moisture. Next I'm going to take a pastry bag and I'm going to fill it with a little bit of mango buttercream. So because I am adding fillings to my cake, I'm going to create a border. Just pressing, pressing, pressing until I have a nice border there. I'm going to take some of my raspberry ganache here 
You ever cut into a cake and you see the layers of filling are nice and even? One way to achieve that is to use an ice cream scoop. So that means if I use one scoop here, then that means for the next layer, I'm going to use one scoop. That way you have an even amount on each layer. And I'm just doing a thin layer of this ganache because to me it's pretty intense. Boom. Now I'm going to take another layer of cake, but I'm using that same layer that was cut from the original cake. I'm not grabbing a random layer from any of the other ones. Next, more simple syrup. For the next layer, I'm actually going to use some of the mango buttercream. So essentially I'm going to be alternating raspberry ganache cake buttercream until I have no more cake. I'm going to use an ice cream scoop for my mango buttercream, but it's a little larger. Next, another layer of cake right on top, gently press down, simple syrup, raspberry ganache, smooth it out, making sure that you're staying within the parameters of that mango border. More cake, simple syrup, and we're just continuing that same pattern. So another mango border. Okay, what goes in the center? We're at mango. Raspberry. For our last layer of cake, I want the bottom to be the top because if you notice here, it has more crumbs. So I'm actually going to flip it the other way. But before I do that, just slap it with some simple syrup. So now that our cake is nice and tall, we have to do a crumb coat layer. It's going to seal in those crumbs so that when it's time for us to smooth ice it, those crumbs are not all over the place. In order to do that, I'm just going to pipe a little bit of buttercream around the sides, put a little bit on top, and using a small offset, I'm just going to smooth this out, locking in those crumbs. Do not skip this step because we need to refrigerate this cake as well. Before we can smooth ice it, the buttercream needs to solidify, so it's really locking in those crumbs. Alrighty. She's ready for the fridge. I am ready to smooth ice my cake. Um, to smooth ice it, we're going to use our vanilla Swiss buttercream. I did add a little bit of chocolate cookies that I put in a food processor and just grind it until it was like a powder. That's gonna give it a nice speckled look, which I think is perfect for our terrazzo. I'm going to go ahead and fill my pastry bag here. I like to have everything ready before I pull my cake out of the fridge because remember the whole point is to keep that crumb coat nice and chilled because if it starts to soften on us while we're smooth icing it, we'll start to see crumbs in our smooth ice. We don't want that. So here's our chilled cake, woohoo! Going to take some of my buttercream here, place it on the top. Using a large offset spatula and a left-right movement while turning the table. It's important to turn the table so that way you're covering the entire surface, okay? Once it's pretty much hanging over the edge, I'm going to take the tip of my offset spatula and I'm going to place it in the center turn it on a 45 degree angle, and then just turn my table. Don't worry about making it super perfect. Now I'm going to cover the sides of my cake by pressing, 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 and turning the table. The goal is just to cover the entire cake with buttercream. It does not have to look beautiful right now. We're going to fix that later. All right. So now that I have buttercream on the side, I'm going to take my large offset spatula. And remember that left-right movement I did earlier? 
I'm going to do the same thing, but my goal is not to remove buttercream. It's just to even it out a bit. And now it's time to smooth ice. In order to do that, I'm going to use a bench scraper. You want to make sure it's not bent or chipped anywhere because that will show up. You want to keep the bench scraper right on the board. You do not want to decorate like this because you will not get nice straight edges. You want to bring it in at a 45 degree angle. The first few times, my goal is not to get it super smooth. It's just to scrape off a little bit of buttercream. And then this time around, I'm going to try to get it nice and smooth. And don't worry about trying to get every imperfection for this terrazzo design because we're gonna cover up all of those imperfections later. At this point, I'm going to throw it back into the refrigerator for at least 20 minutes. That's imperative because in order to carve the cake, we need this buttercream to be nice and firm. Before that, I'm going to go ahead and color some of my Swiss buttercream. When it comes to the terrazzo pattern, you can do whatever colors you want. I would say at least a minimum of four. I wouldn't go past six. I think it gets a little too busy after that, but I'm going to go ahead and do four colors. I'm actually using some natural food coloring. Um, natural food coloring is made from freeze dried fruits. For example, red could be pomegranate or it could be raspberry or strawberry, depending on what you're using. These are all mixed up now. I have four different colors. They're just gonna hang out for a little bit because now I'm going to take my cake out of the fridge using, so this is a clay tool and we're going to use this to carve little indents into our cake. Just a friendly reminder to make sure your cake is really, really cold. Don't overthink this and literally just carve in the cake like that. The terrazzo pattern is very abstract and different sizes, different shapes. So just keep that in mind. Don't try to make it perfect. As you can see, I have tons of random crevices here in the cake. Now I'm going to take my bench scraper and I just wanna clean it up a little bit. Just get rid of some of that buttercream that's hanging on the sides. Remember those four colors I have? Here we go. Cut a very, very small hole because our goal is to fill in the crevices there. All right, so grab your first color now and just randomly start filling the holes. I don't like to have two of the same colors next to each other. Trust me, it's not the end of the world if it happens, but I'm trying my best to space out the colors. All right, I think that's pretty good for now. Let's try a different color. Actually, let's go yellow. <laughs> okay, on to the next color. Let's get some blue in there now. Now that I have each crevice filled with a colored buttercream, I need to go and smooth ice it one more time. Please be very, very gentle when you're doing this. The goal is not to scrape off buttercream, but it's just to make this nice and flush and it's going to reveal the terrazzo pattern. The first time around, it's not going to be 100% clean. That's okay. I'm going to go around one more time and I'm good with that. And just like that, that's how you do a terrazzo cake with buttercream. I know there were quite a few steps there, but um, it's fun, it's colorful, and it's different. So I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, look at those layers. So it's going to be packed with flavor. Mm. I absolutely love chiffon cakes because they were just naturally fluffy, light, and then the matcha just gives it this little tea flavor. And then you get that smack in the face of the raspberry and the mango is subtle. Like it's really, really good. Mm -mm -mm. And then just look how beautiful it looks on the inside too. It's delicious. But as you can see, it sounds like a very technical and tough technique, but once you follow the steps, making sure you're refrigerating it after the smooth coat and the crumb coat, you're golden. You got this. Get out there and try it. Thank you so much for watching it. 
Have a good one.